internet friends, welcome to another episode of the Synergy Cafe online show featuring speaker, entertainer, close-up illusionist, and marketing alchemist, Magic Brad. It's the internet lifestyle show about career, finance, relationships, spirituality, and wellness. We're moving the online chatter over to real life activity. And now, please welcome your host of Synergy Cafe, Magic Brad. Hey, Internet friends, this is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe and the Synergy Collaborative, and I'm back here, and it, what is it? It's TGIF, I think, today, and I've got a new friend that's right now currently out in Utah enjoying some warmer weather, and his name is Chris Miles. You there, Chris? I'm here. Greetings. So are you in Utah right now? I am. I'm in Utah for the next few weeks, just spending Christmas out here, and then uh, heading out to California here in a few weeks, so See, that's what's so cool about the internet these days, to be able to earn a living from not having to be tethered down to an office. Exactly. <laughs> just be uh, like, here's my office. Ta-da. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. I've got mine, too. So tell us a little about yourself. Um, you got kids. I think you got kids because I can hear it, unless you run, you're operating a daycare center or something. You got kids? You married? It sure sounds like it. Yeah, I just told them to stop playing the piano a few seconds ago, so uh, that's awesome. So yeah, I've actually got uh, two kids in the home right now. I actually have a total of eight kids between, uh, I just got remarried. So with my six wow. kids and her two kids, um, yeah, I've got eight kids total. So it's a, it's like Brady Bunch without gonna Alice. I was going to say, there was a story. <laughs> <laughs> so have you lived in Utah? How long you, where are you originally from? Originally I'm from Portland, Oregon, right about that area. You know, oh, so that's you ever a seen cool the Twilight spot. movies? That's basically kind of where I grew up. I did. Um, uh, I did a book but, uh, report but, uh, when I was a kid. I moved to Utah here about seventeen years ago. Wow! So you got some foundation there. Cool. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I've lived in Minneapolis here for fifty-nine years, other than two years in LA and two years in Asheville. Other than that, a lot of foundation. Too much. That's right. <laughs> so I looked into a little bit of what you got going on through your website and stuff, but you're—I am assuming like internet marketing. That's a, a met- methods of generating revenue through. Uh, what is it? Blogging or affiliate sales? What, what kind of occupation do you do to be able to be free? <laughs> yeah, so I work as a consultant uh, primarily. I'm like an anti-financial advisor because I'm showing people how to create cash flow and freedom today rather than waiting for 30, 40 years to retire. It's like, oh, how do we yeah, get you to retire yeah. now or within the next 10 years or something like that? Got so, it. The reason so I got a little life and lifestyle. Right? The reason I got a little confused on that was because me and a friend of mine that does a lot of internet marketing, that's exactly what him and I are talking about now. About mm-hmm. it's about the flow and being able to yes. reinvest the money and and a lot of people don't have that thinking of the thinking the transaction mentality of I'll give you an hour and you'll give me twenty bucks. Uh huh. Yeah, a lot of people, people. There's a. I noticed this first uh, back in two thousand six. I was actually able to retire when I was twenty eight the first time. Uh, Before I came out of retirement to teach what I'm teaching today. And uh, it was interesting because I thought, I used to be a traditional financial advisor, and I thought you had to work for, you know, years and years, save and save and save and save and save and hoard up all these nuts like you're a squirrel to then hopefully someday live on the interest, right? And uh, and that's a long time. It it takes forever to do that. Um, But what I found out was that it was through cash flow by having streams of income coming in, especially if they're more residual. um, Then actually what happens is that now you can work because you want to not because you have to right and it doesn't require a lot of money it's just about how do you get those streams of income coming in and yeah they come in from income streams through business uh, like internet and things like that or affiliate marketing or things of that nature like i've done um there's also things like uh i mean you do through residual income like with investments and things like that but it's about how to create cash flow now okay i i totally get it because i just did a podcast with a guy yesterday guys i talked to him about you don't need to have a company all you need is a bank account or yeah. a PayPal account, for that matter. And um, he said, well, how can a person be able to make enough money to make a living? And I said, surprisingly, it doesn't doesn't cost that much to make a living. And if you can have that flow going yes. through, you don't need to make that much money. You don't need to drive a Lamborghini and make $100,000 a month. You don't need it. Nope, not at all. No, it's, a, it's, it's really, that's why it's always about cash flow. It's about how you manage what's coming in and what's going out. Um, most financial people tell you like only look what's going out, you know, look at the expenses, try to be as cheap as possible so that you make everybody else pay for you and everybody hates you, that kind of stuff. You know, I don't believe in that. I believe that you can still have your cake and eat it too. Um, but you do have to be responsible. You have to be a wise steward of the resources you have. And 
if you know what's coming in and what's going out, if you're tracking your money and you're doing that kind of stuff, it's very easy to be able to set, set very specific goals and say, here's what I need to be able to create the lifestyle that I want. Exactly. And the, the cash flow and then being able to reinvest that into something that's working for you. Like uh, me and my friend Ron, we're doing an eBay, Amazon kind of thing. That's funding our Facebook advertising. So we're yes. building an audience basically just by trading books back and forth. We buy books and resell them and that gives us enough to fund it. And then yep. it grows it and then there's stuff on the back end. That's, that's exactly one of the income streams my wife does too. And it's one aspect outside of her business as well. So and that's yeah. what you do is you coach people on, on how to do that kind of stuff? Or I, I'm assuming that a lot of the things that you have to do is shift a person's mentality, a thinking style that's totally topsy-turvy. It is, yeah. I mean, most people I work with are usually entrepreneurs and professionals. So many of them are already kind of almost wanting to turn, turn things topsy-turvy anyways, right? Because we think different when we're entrepreneurs. Um, and even professionals do too. And, and so what I get people to do is start to is get rid of that whole traditional mindset of save everything, spend nothing. Hopefully someday you might have enough money to, to retire. It's how do we get you to start thinking in, in terms of cash flow? How do you start thinking in terms of abundance? You know, because I'll tell you, no matter what your bank account says, you will never be financially free unless you can control how your mind accepts things. Because right. financial freedom has nothing to do with your bank account. It's all a state of mind, not a state of your, your money. And so be able to have that money too and have the freedom in the mind to be able to say, hey, I make decisions because not because I need to because of money, but because I know that um, I've got more than and enough to spare in my life. That's, that's really cool. And uh, you'd said that uh, most of your clients are entrepreneurs, so they kind of get it. Um, I've been an entrepreneur all my life, and I'm just starting to understand it because my entrepreneurship has been, I mean, I'm almost 60 years old, so I've been modeled. I'm actually mm -hmm. unlearning things is what's yes. happening because I'm finding out that you, like, like with the Amazon eBay stuff, we make five bucks here, 10 bucks there. How can you make a living with five dollars here and ten dollars there? Well, you reinvest it into something that grows bigger, that grows bigger. And it's like that penny dollared every day kind of thing. Yeah. That's how that can work if you reinvest a portion of it and don't go splurging on a new BMW. Exactly. Cool. Yeah. And if you have a BMW, great. That's fine. But just know that you have there is a price to pay for that and you've right. got to compensate for it, you know? And so and, and I think that's the key is like what you just said is that I mean the mindset does need a shift. If if you hear anybody in the media that's talking about money stuff like how to save money or make money or whatever. Like all that stuff is crap for the most part because mainstream media, I mean, let's think about it. Mainstream America is not free. So why would we follow that advice that we've been given for 30 or 40 years now that already says, hey, just do this and this is how you become free. It hasn't worked. All the Dave Ramsey's out there hasn't worked. None of that stuff works. You've got to do almost the exact opposite to create freedom. Have you read and That's the what I learned. That's when I think switched for me in 2006 is I started to listen to millionaires who said, here's how we've done it. And some of them were younger than I was at the time. That blew my mind. There was 20-something millionaires out there. And uh, when they started to say, no, it's about the cash flow, and that's how you create the lifestyle and quality of life and abundance thinking too. You mix those together, then freedom can occur. Yeah. Um, have you read that book, Money Master of the Game with Tony Robbins? Uh, no, but I've, it's, uh, I've it's heard a lot about it. And uh, it's I've, heard, I've heard it's... some of the strategies. Some of them are good. Some of them are very traditional. And that's great for average America. You know, but uh, well, yeah, some of those some part of strategies of the, and I'm like, yeah, cool. Those are great for average people. But if you want to take it to another level, you got to go beyond even that what that book says too. Exactly. But the part of the essence is that um, like when you invest with a financial advisor and stuff, will they invest their money in the stuff that they that you're they're putting you into? And usually they won't because there's too much of a risk. So basically they're gambling with your money and they have no risk, only gain. And uh, that's what that book kind of did was awaken that kind of thing. Because you see people that are savvy with numbers and all that, and you get all clouded over with the, the compounding and the percentages and all that. You just say, okay, here's my money. Make sure it grows. doesn't work that way, does it? No, it doesn't. <laughs> Absolutely not. It's got to it's gotta be done pretty much the exact opposite of everything you've been taught. And, and uh, definitely uh, put it with advisors. I mean, most advisors, again, they're based on an agenda. They get paid to, uh, to sell you products, right? I mean, they try to, and that's when actually why I left in 2006 is it was March of 06. I was, I was thinking about trying to make it work, but when I started to see the, the other side of things, right, the reality, I said, wait, this hasn't worked for years. It will continue not to work for years. And really everybody that's teaching me how to teach other people. It was always about how to sell a product ultimately. 
like all the advice when it really came down to is how do you fit a, a need, a client need with the things that we're trying to sell them? It wasn't about what actually really creates financial freedom for people. And I couldn't stay in integrity more. So March of 06, I said, I'm done. My practice was at a high and I left it. I said, I can't do this anymore. I can't be in integrity. I'll just go teach ballroom dancing. And, uh, and that's actually <laughs> what I did for a little while. Um, but then I started to apply the things that I learned. And then pretty soon as I started to retire, people were like, wait, how did you do that? Um, that's when I came back out. I said, okay, I've got a mission now. Like I've got so many years of this life left. I can either just keep it to myself and be happy with my family, or I can actually go and create more value for the world by teaching what I teach. Well, that's, that's super cool. I'm, I, I've, I, I know what you're talking about because I do a lot of the similar kind of stuff too. It's, uh, it's where you allocate that money. And you, people, they, you know about that compounding thing that grows. It goes the other way too. It compounds and goes down if you don't do it right. You know what I mean? Yep. So can you, uh, cost. can you share how to get a hold of you if people want to learn more about what you do or maybe consult with you and, and get educated? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, you can do a few things. I mean, either you can reach out to me. I have a podcast called The Chris Miles Money Show that you can find on iTunes or Stitcher or whatever. Um, or you can even like reach out to me. You can even email me personally, Chris at moneyripples.com. That's M-O-N-E-Y-R-I-P-P-L-E-S.com. And just, uh, you know, just email me there. Moneyripples.com. I like that. <laughs> yeah, I do too. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do is uh, after we get done here, I'm going to take this and beam this up to YouTube and I'll put the links and stuff in there so people can just click them and, and get access to you. But uh, before you go, I want to ask my favorite question. And you kind of answered it through the whole thing, but in, in the essence of why is it, that you're doing this kind of business? What's the, what's the deep why? The deep why is really, a, yeah, like I mentioned, like it's, it's really about creating that ripple effect. The reason my company is called Money Ripples is because the image, I, the vision I had in my mind before I, I named the company was, I, I knew that if I start with an individual, and I've seen people's lives be blessed, even like Minnesota and, and other places too, like I've seen people, their lives changing, right? And that affects their family and it creates a ripple effect through the family and then even generations beyond them. And then their community and the country and ultimately across the world. And I think that's really what I want to create. I, I knew my life. I wasn't here to live a part-time life. I'm here to live a full-time mission, right? And so I knew that to do that, I can either keep it to myself or expand and grow and teach others to do the same. And, and that's really what's been enriching for my life. It's more than just about the money. It's about how to actually have purpose in my life. Well, again, 99.99% um, .99 of these things that I do, it's people wanting to help other people. So... These, these Synergy Cafe interviews are encouraging for humanity. Okay. Yeah, so absolutely. I appreciate you, Chris, taking the time. If you want to stick around for a little bit, we'll have another little chat. But other than that, I'm going to take this and beam it up to the cosmos. So, again, thanks for taking the time today to be on Synergy Cafe with Magic Brad and the Synergy Collaborative. Thanks, Chris. Thank you so much. We'll see you.